Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 114 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them here. This one's called Stay Flat. Hey Mark, always encouraged to hear your podcasts on YouTube. Just listen to the March 2018 episode with Unexplained Podcast. I don't think he understood the basics of Flat Earth. Would you agree that the most fundamental basic Flat Earth concept is zero curvature, proved by gyros and telephoto cameras over the ocean? Since the idea lands home isn't the rest gravy. Maybe the next proof for me is the laughable spinning ball at over a thousand miles an hour faster than a speeding bullet, except at the axis where it's less than half of that. Be encouraged and don't sell out for bigger bank. Tempting, I know. Keep holding the line and that's from Clay. Thank you, Clay. And uh, yeah, absolutely. The most fundamental basic flat earth concept is the cur curvature of the earth or lack of. Uh, something I really didn't even talk about in the clue is people just started running out to any beach they could with telephoto lenses and just started zooming in on things that should not be there. Because remember, if the curvature is eight inches per mile squared, otherwise known as eight inches per mile per mile, then the you should get to a distance where it is on the other side of the hill and unless you're going to claim that everything is a mirage and you can see far over the hill and it's not real although that persists in just about any weather condition any light condition under time lapse then then yeah of course then I'll then I'll give it to you but that's not the case this next one is called YouTube comment mark I'm going to have to zoom in boy the font on this is tiny Zoom in to like 200%. Mark, I am very trying very hard to remain open-minded. What I get is flat earthers telling me that if I don't believe as they do, I am closed-minded. I am being told that I must ignore the evidence given to me about the round earth theory. First off, you're saying round, not globe, not sphere, not ball. It's not round, okay? Dinner plate is round. It is also two-dimensional, roughly two-dimensional. Uh, Rounder theory, but being presented with proof from the same form of media and being told to believe that. Not to mention all videos I find are videos that spend half their time just attacking the rounder theory and then providing a bunch of how without any why on flat earth. Mark, I respect your opinion and I agree that round earth is very hard to prove without the help of a billionaire or a government agency. However, neither is the flat earth. I don't think that's the best grammar in the world, but we'll let it slide. What's more is there are many, many gaps in the flat earth. I wouldn't say many, many. There are a few. Yes, of course. There's a lot more in the globe. Uh, and things that are left unexplained that fit and are explained in the round earth model. I don't know why those physicists at the university could not answer your questions because they are quite simple explanations for all of them that just a fraction more of an understanding of physics will explain. I would challenge you, sir, sir, to please for a moment forget that anyone thinks the Earth is round and prove using scientific method that the Earth is flat. Let's pretend that no one knows what shape it is and we are trying to figure it out. And he gives me his email address, but no name, although I can see it up there in the thing. I love it when people like don't put the deliberately do not put their name at the bottom of the email, but it's in the, the email identifier up above. And I won't give out his name, but I mean, there it is. Uh, I will also send this to you in your email. And that's and that's it. So let's zoom back out because my Lord, he was using a small font. Uh, what was it? Where were we at? I can't remember. Anyway, thank you for that. And again, uh, it's not that I can prove the globe in a court of law, but I, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. It's not that I can prove the flat earth in a court of law, but I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe model that you have nowhere else to turn but the flat earth or some version of it, which is why the flat earth works so well. Because there's not a lot of flat earthers, there's a lot of different camps, dome, note dome, uh, infinite plane, a whole bunch of lands outside of the dome, and, and so on and so on, cosmic egg model, blah, blah, blah. There's all these different models, and at the very least, everyone can agree that it's not a globe. That's one, one of the reasons why flat earth works so incredibly well. Moving on. 
This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, hello, my name is Justin Moore, and I was watching your video today on YouTube about Flat Earth. I've seen it before a few years back and pretty much wrote it off, not really wanting to think about it or dig into it. But a friend of mine has since pecked, <laughs> pecked, peaked people, come on, pecked my interest again, and I started to dive into the conversation once again. I have many questions and hints to why I'm sending this message to you. Please get back with me. Uh, hopefully this guy will get back on his own. No cliffhangers. If you got questions, put them in the original email. I get a lot of emails, and if you say, uh, all you have to do is email me back, and I'll send you the real questions. No, send me the real questions. Don't you dare cliffhanger me. This one's called Flat Earth Parody. Hi, Mark. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind putting these links dedicated to all the Flat Earthers on your group chat uh, or group email. Thank you much, Teresa. And you know what? I, I've totally, I haven't done a QA since, uh, since she sent this to me. And so it's from Teresa and she does some flatter songs every once in a while. And this particular flatter song is called Flat Earth Parody Number One. Her email, or I'm sorry, her YouTube channel is called Teresa L E S K I N E N. And I believe I gave it a thumbs up. And I didn't know, it's not unpublished. If you guys can hear the sirens in the background, that's my ride. Never can seem to find me, though. Anyway, thank you for that, Teresa. And, uh, yeah, if anyone, uh, just, just go to that link if you get a chance. I think I've thumbed up both of them. She, she sent, oh, and she did Flat Earth Parody number two. So, thank you for that, Teresa. Cool, very cool. This one's called... Flat Earth, Antarctica. S Mark, so you are talking like governments are keeping people out. You are talking like Antarctica is in one place as in a spherical Earth. Yes, the Flat Earth model has Antarctica as being all around the circumference of the Flat Earth. USA can't even protect its own borders. How are we and other governments going to keep people out of all the south edges of the Earth? It is strange that no one can tell us that they have seen the edge when the edge is such a huge area, all of which would be impossible to keep humans from gaining this information. It's kind of like the Bigfoot that we can never see, even though we have the capability to find anything on this earth. There are honest people in this world that want the truth to come out. Where is it? Where is the proof of the flat earth? Uh, let me address the first thing which was Antarctica. Uh, no, I've, I've always said that Antarctica surrounds us. That's what we call the continent. I mean, you got to give it a name. And since Antarctica is at least down there or out there, it, uh, that's the name you give the entire outer edge. Uh, however, as far as protecting the borders, you don't have to do much in that case because it is a hostile environment. The place just screams, go away. You got to remember that before you even get to Antarctica, you approach icebergs. And, and if you're in a ship, there's, there's nothing scarier than an iceberg. And then when you get there, it's a 100, 150, 200 foot wall of ice straight up. That's most of the coastline. And then when you get on top of that, it elevates up to, uh, what was it, 14,000 feet, a plateau of ice, 14,000 feet high. And that's, mo and, you know, altitude sickness kicks in at about 7,000 feet. And there's no indigenous plant life, no animal life. And, uh, there's, there's nothing out there. There's no resources. So, and it's all just white, stark white glacier landscape. No one wants to go down there. So it'd be different if the place was like Hawaii. And, and people would be, oh, it's, what, it's a beautiful paradise. I want to go there. This place is the opposite of that. It is a, it's a very, very hostile environment to humans. So we don't have to do much. Uh, if you think it's a, it's, I'm kidding, look at the Antarctic tours. You can go along, like, again, the coastline. It costs you something between 10000 and 15000 American. And that's a lot of money for any one trip. I think it's the most expensive tour package that there is. And when you go there, what are you seeing? You're just in a raft. You get a, a couple pic pictures taken with uh, penguins, and that's about it. Anyway, moving on. That's from Jake. Thank you, Jake. This one's called, not sure if you saw this Jim Carrey short film, <clears throat> possible Flat Earth reference. Mark, this is from June of last year, but I'd never seen it until yesterday. 
and what is it? It is, oh yeah, yeah, it's the, you can look up Jim Carrey's latest projects, but he says a few things noticed while watching this. Uh, one, the NASA ball cap. Two, burning of money uh, using the United States dollar to cook food. Three, the guy at the end says he's lost. Watch what Carrey gives him at about four uh, minutes, 15 seconds. Yeah, that's the uh, the snow globe. Needless to say, I chuckled a bit inside and thought it would be worth sharing. Hope all good and this new year has found you well. Thanks for everything that you do. That's from Joseph in Iowa. And I, by the way, it's not a short film. I think it's a major movie. I just I don't think it's been released yet. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, Jim Carrey looks looks kind of post apocalyptic, or he's just a crazy homeless person in the middle of the desert. But I don't know much more than that, other than the trailer looks makes it look very, very interesting. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. Thanks. Thank you very much for sharing your research. I've watched many videos regarding Flat Earth, and yours is the most recent. I must confess, I don't want to believe this, but here I am. The one burning question I have is regarding aliens. Can you provide me with a link, or is this a simple answer? I received the Stanton Friedman copies of the Roswell incident in the early 1980s. Uh, is this a lie, too? Thanks very much, and that's from Beth Reams. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's not a, a, a con job. There are things flying around up there. I mean, you can see them any day. Just grab some night vision binoculars. And I know that's easier said than done. You have to go on Amazon and actually buy night vision binoculars, but you can't buy them in 5x power. Uh, I use Night Owl, and I was using those for several years before I even got into Flat Earth. Some guy from England, I was watching something on YouTube, and he goes, you want to see some weird stuff, get some night vision, and start looking up at night. And I thought, <laughs> sounds like a challenge. So I grabbed some night vision binoculars, started staring straight up, and thought I was looking at satellites. And then I started watching these things just moving all over the place. It's, it's almost like they live on some nights, and it's really, really interesting. Uh, and you can start to see patterns and, and uh, different formations. I mean, f watching a group fly in formation, that's what freaks you out and how they turn and, and, and can cover the sky so quickly uh, without a single, without any sound uh, at amazing altitudes. Uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, uh, Stanton Friedman, eh, he's all right. You know, I got a chance to debate him a couple of years ago, and he's not a big fan of Flat Earth because he believes... He's chummy with astronauts. He had an astronaut write the forward to his his last book. But as far as other things that you know what you want the um, the best alien footage I've ever seen. Look up the Oak Bay. I, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube too. But if you if you can find it, let me know. I've got a hard copy of it. I can send it to you. The resolution isn't great because it was from a few years back. But it's the Oak. It's Oak Bay up in Canada, just north of here. Actually, the crow flies not even 20 minutes from here. Uh, where there was a ship that didn't even have its lights on and it was running at dusk at a very low altitude over a bay. Not a, No sound. It wasn't a helicopter. It was not an airplane. The, it was a very, very quiet bay. The, the water was very, very still and there were people drinking out in their sailboats. And they were filming this thing and, and you see it very, very easily. So check it out if you get a chance. Uh, I think that's one of the, the greatest sightings ever. I mean, yeah, it's not as interesting necessarily as Roswell, uh, but it's a, it's a running, moving ship that's, that's crossing. It is not CGI. It's, it's brilliant. So anyway, if you get a chance, look that up. So, but yes, Beth, there's things that are out there. Do, do I know who they are? No. Um, I, I suspect they are members of an older civilization, older than us. I have said many times since the beginning that we are not the first people to rent this apartment. And there are older versions out there. We, well, there's remnants of, this, of that all over the place. The sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, Bimini Road, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids. Uh, which I went out and visited just to just to confirm what I already knew, which was we had nothing to do with building those things. Uh, they are an engineering marvel, uh, and there's even more ruins out there. I, I mean, I will say that even though ancient aliens may have been compromised, they did touch on some fantastic ruins uh, that showed engineering feats that we couldn't do today. Moving on.
This one's called Subscription Website. Mark, I heard you mention before, I think that you are not affiliated with MarkSargent.com. Can you confirm this is still the case? If you are not working with this group, how is it they have access to your content to post on this site? I was wondering if some of your early content might be there and nowhere else, uh, making a one month subscription worthwhile to get access to that stuff. Flat friend DJ. His real name's Ollie. Uh, okay, first thing, I am not affiliated with MarkSargent.com in any way, shape, or form now. Uh, I haven't been for a couple of years. Uh, what's the old saying? No good deed goes unpunished. A producer from San Diego called me up, and this is the Joe Real story. If you guys haven't already heard the Joe Real story or the Ralph Real story, a producer from San Diego, just a small-time Hollywood wannabe producer, called me up and said, hey, I'd like to do an app uh, for, you know, Mark Sargent app for, for the phone. It's like, okay, fine. Do I have to do anything? No, I, I don't do apps on my phone. I literally use my phone for just a phone. And then he says, Hey, I'd like to do Mark Sargent.com. I, I, I want to get the rights to it. Uh, you know, I didn't have the rights to Mark Sargent.com. Don't care. And, and he goes, look, I'll, I'm making a pay site for like 10 bucks a month and I'll give you half the money. I said, okay, fine, whatever. Do I have to do anything? No, and that's not. And why are it's like, well, why is there con my YouTube stuff? You can link, put YouTube links on on any website. You don't need anyone's permission to do it. And so he did, and that's what how it worked. And and then he didn't pay me any money. And so people were doing subscriptions, and he was making the money, and has didn't send me anything. And that was a couple of years ago. And so if it's still out there, look, I have nothing to do with it. I don't promote it anymore. I haven't for a long, long time. So, um, and if you see Joe Real, tell him he owes me money. But I'd legally, look, you got to spend money to make money and I'm not going to go after him. It's like, whatever. I mean, it's still, it still increases the metrics out there and it still promotes my YouTube videos and I'll still get hits from that website. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry though, if people want something, there's no, ex nothing exclusive on that site that, uh, that, uh, I, I killed all the exclusive links and then destroyed them out of YouTube. Cause he wanted me to cover other topics besides flat earth. He wanted my opinion on things and I destroyed those links. And so whatever. So anyway, I wouldn't even recommend going to it, but thank you for, for asking DJ. Very few people ask, ask about that anymore. This one's called New Conspiracy Theory. Hey, Mark, my name's Matt, a.k.a. Flat Earth Sage on YouTube. I am written you in regards to a new conspiracy I recently stumbled across. Not sure if you know this one or not, but I know how you have mentioned how you like conspiracy theories. This is true. I was recently watching D. Marble in a live stream talk about a long lost civilization of people known as the Tartarians. Yeah, I've heard about this as well, which was a civilization we suspect with advanced technology. More information, information suggests that at some point in the 1850s, a massive worldwide mud flood caused by liquid faction completely wiped out the civilization in mud, which of course dried and became dirt. Evidence suggests St. Petersburg, Russia later built brand new buildings directly on top of this old civilization. I wish I could explain more, but it's a lot to type. Much respect, Flatter Sage. No, I don't know much about this. And I've heard, yeah, I've heard rumors about the mud flood, uh, but I don't know. Again, history is written by the survivors, so I, I don't know. Uh, other than that, uh, until I get my time machine back up and running, I'm not going to be able to check it out myself. But thank you for mentioning. This one's called Aaron Payhoff. I, that's actually his name. Very few people actually put their name in the title. Uh, hey, Mark, watched your audio video on Flat Earth. Why the heck hasn't someone or anyone dug a hole straight down to the center of the Earth? It's the only way to prove once and for all if the Earth is hollow or not. It's a simple concept, don't you think? I do. <laughs> Uh, you, did, have you not watched the clues? Uh, I want to see it happen. The biggest hole the world has ever seen. If you cannot access Antarctica, but you can dig a hole. Any, he has obviously not watched the clues. Uh, around the world, it all leads to the center point. I ain't the smartest guy on the planet, but it's quite simple, I think. If it's full of molten lava, fill it back in. This is just cut and paste from my comment under the conspiracy video like to know what you think about this idea and why hasn't anyone tried it before what if all the info on how big the earth is bs and they tell everyone that because if they know it's too hard they'll never try it and could the depth of earth be more shallow than they reckon 
Is there a law saying that you can't dig past a certain point without notifying the government in each particular country because you don't need a mining license or something? I'm saying it because the government always has some kind of control points for everything. Well, it'd be great to know what you think. Cheers, Aaron from Brisbane, Australia. And I don't know how he got this far. Is there, there must be another set of videos out there that that I'm in that uh, don't mention the clues or something because I cover this quite well in the clues that you cannot dig past eight miles. No one's been able to do it, and they've tried for a very, very long time. Uh, the Russians and the Germans really gave it a, gave it a go and didn't didn't work out for them. This one's called Emergency Call from Space. Mark, you'll love this one. And this is from a British newspaper called The Sun. And it's, it's and I'm sure there's going to be multiples of these. Uh, astronaut calls 911 space NASA security. Regards Adam from England. Yeah, yeah, I, I know about that one. Uh, you can look up that headline. This one's called Creator Revealed, Oppressor Exposed. Good day, sir. Oh, I don't know if you should call me sir, but whatever. I haven't been knighted. I have just finished watching your 12-part YouTube presentation. It is truly super. Let me just shortly introduce myself. I'm 58-year-old male from Kimberley, South Africa, going by the name of Cecil. I grew up normal, did what I was told to do according to the system, but followed my head for many years after school since 1978, doing what I wanted when and how I wanted. After six sessions in rehab and three divorces during that period, I started to realize that whatever I am doing, it's not why I'm here on earth. There must be more to life than this. Was born again in 2009 and did the Christian thing, read the Bible, prayed, go to church, but never stopped searching for the higher calling. Got involved with church as much as I could. In 2018, around June, I was exposed or introduced to the flatter theory as any normal human being. I found it quite hilarious and absurd, but I went onto YouTube and started investigating. After a couple days watching and searching, I made up my mind, the earth is flat. At that stage, I still felt whether the earth is round or flat or any shape, it's cool with me, I left it there. In December of 2018, I got fired. <laughs> Uh, I knew as sure as I am alive that it was a prayer come true. I prayed for months to get time to spend with God. I really cried out to God to release me, but I was holding on to the salary and income. A couple of months ago, I truly got the res revelation that God is my provider, and from there, it just got better for my spirit, but worse to the mind and flesh. But God is faithful. He heard my prayer and I was released from my day job. Definitely not the way I wanted it to happen, but now I can see God's hand in everything. Come December, I spent every day, all day to dig as deep as I possibly could to see who I am through the eyes of God. I was led to the teachings of Dr. Miles Monroe. Through his wonderful teachings, I got most information I was searching for. I got confirmation through the Bible. I can answer the five most important questions. One, who am I? Where do I come from? Why am I here? What can I do? Where am I going? Through these questions, I found my purpose for the thing I hate most. It was confirmed with this clip. Um, the last two days, I had it in my spirit to come back to the Flat Earth clips. I still wanted to watch and download and watch the God Enclosed Flat Earth Investigation Part 1 through 12. Thank you so much. It is part of the thing I was born for, to expose the oppression and to empower people with the truth. I have to go back to the drawing board and rearrange my life once again, everything except the living word of God, which from now on uh, be questioned and investigated by me. I cannot even trust myself, even my eyes to see me, but glory to God who is able, willing, obedient, and faithful to reveal the truth to us. He shall restore our eyesight. He shall whisper in our ears and guide us with divine godly wisdom to expose each and every lie we have been taught. Much love and thankfulness from my side for being the instrument to guide me to the truth. I am sure we will have some chats in the future as we are heading in the same direction. Have a blessed day, Cecil from South Africa. Cool. This one's called ISS 911 call. Yep, very same article from The Sun. Because even in a silly article like that, you uh, you find out that it's just a space reinforcement story. And that is, because there's an ISS story, you're in space. Period. That's that's. You don't even have to read the article. Same one. Third one in a row. Astronaut sparks panic after accidentally dialing 911 from space, sending NASA security teams into a frenzy. I doubt if it was a frenzy. 
And only, see, everyone's linking just the same article, which is The Sun. I don't even remember, did the Americans actually run something on this? This one's called Flat as a Pancake. Hi, Mark. I viewed all the expert matter shows and a lot of Jaronism, Rob Skiba, and Celebrate Truth stuff. I agree that the size of our school globe is 100% false. Measurements could be influenced by the atmosphere we need to live. My approach to find the curve was resetting my phone gyroscope at level surface 0.0 in both directions. Take same level to level of another space a few hundred kilometers away without power without the power of the phone oh without the power being on yep yep to be sure the gyros stay put um and let's see i also use a 90 degree angle and a plumb line to check my level and instruments even at ranges further than 600 kilometers i still have a 0.0 result as i'm very careful about the setup it should be over five degrees there what what are missing uh, i'm sorry his spelling is horrible uh, i want to know if this approach is also done within the u.s yes it is and maybe we all have to do the same or more experiments i wonder if the globe will take one test to end this discussion perhaps we should do a vacuum test with pipes and a laser that l is leveled over miles we've we've already done that with a yep 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 uh my best regards martin Pullman. Oh, that's why, because his English isn't very good. Uh, from the Netherlands. So thank you for that, for that Martin. And uh, yeah, I totally get it. And we're we're on top of it all. We're we're doing all sorts of great experiments. We've already done them, and everything proves the same thing. And we're just growing bigger and bigger every day. This one's called. This seems interesting. Okay, it is a Facebook link, and yep, it is a, uh, a sun dog image. That's like some movie of a sundog it's beautiful and it's uh i don't know where it was done it doesn't doesn't really say but it's beautiful yeah i love sundogs because i think it shows some at, some weird atmospheric lensing that's tied to the dome so thank you for that and let's get out of that moving on this one's called no subject mark this is the best game ever made it mentions the firmament as well thanks for being awesome john and that game in question is the Le oh it's a trailer yeah, yeah yeah i saw this uh it was done by, it's called the legend of zelda breath of the wild the switch trailer it's the 1080p japanese audio english subtitles uh, it's about three minutes long and it's interesting yeah yeah all, all video games not not a big shock all video games are based on a flat model period uh, and in fact, it's a flat enclosed model. Uh, it, all video games are based on really a big box where you're creating the illusion of three dimensional inside, you know, that an illusion inside this box. But it's got walls and a floor and a ceiling, and it's absolutely flat. Yes, of course, there's valleys and there's mountains and all that. But from one edge to the other edge, those two edges line up, they're level. This one's called Lights in the Sky. Oh my. Good day, Mark. I am not a full-blown flat earther, but there has been a lot of information passed down by you that makes one draw a question mark on its validity. With that said, one thing that is true is the overwhelming amount of lies that have been told by the government's religion of the world about everything. So in essence, I am more inclined to believe a lot of what you were revealing. Here is my question. I have searched Yahoo Answers and picked the mind... Uh, minds of the non-sheeple of a website called lunaticoutpost.com and no one ever answers this question effectively. When I was out stargazing one evening about eight or nine years ago, I noticed a twinkling light in the sky that seemed to rapidly phase through the colors blue, green, red, and silver. I live in northern New York and I found this anomaly in the southwestern horizon. I'm not sure on its directional degrees, but it is always there, stationary. What's more is there are at least two more of them in the sky as well, one in the northwest and one in the east. I have never tried to plot them with a compass, but once you see them, you can't miss them. What didn't occur to me until I discovered flat earth clues was these objects are too close to be stars and they don't ever move from their locations. And if you are to consider 
the Earth is rotating completely every 24 hours. Why do these objects not cross the sky and fall out of view every night? Thanks. Stay flat, Corey. And I, I don't. What's the question here? Why do these objects not cross the sky? I do not know. I do not know. I, I take a video of these things if you get a chance. Get get a get your HD camera out there and zoom in on these things and show me what you're what you're seeing. And if anybody else sees what he's seeing, I'd love to hear more about it. I'm always fascinated in what's happening up in the sky, which is otherwise known as the ceiling. This one's called Hi, Mark. Just wanted your flat Earth. <laughs> Oh, please let this be from the United States. I, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to correct grammar on the fly here. I just watched your Flat Earth Clues introduction video. I want to believe. I don't know how, though. I first heard about this in a credible way yesterday and have been forced to consider the possibility that this is true. I'm not a troll. I'm a Christian, and I think you are, too. Yes, I am. If this is all true, where have all the manned rockets and space shuttles and space probes been going? Uh, into the water out in the deep part of the Pacific. That's, I mean, there is, you can look it up. It's called a uh, space graveyard, space water graveyard, something like that. The most remote place uh, in the Pacific Ocean, because, you know, the Pacific Ocean is massive. And uh, there are places out there that, I, yeah, they've been explored, I think, but no one goes out there. Um, where are the GPS satellites? Surely they can't be faked. How could all these rockets have been going up and then just coming down without people noticing? Well, if you dump them in the drink, remember, it's, the world is supposedly 70% water. These are amateurs in telescopes with telescopes out there. Surely they have, they have seen things or not seen things. Oh, I'm not saying there aren't things up there. I'm just saying they haven't been put up by rockets. Absolutely, there's stuff flying up there. No, no question. I think also a lot of it is, is not us. Uh, I have a terrible feeling that I've been lied to. As an engineer and a space enthusiast, that feels awful. I don't want to read about people on salt planes showing things are flat or fake space pictures. Smarter people than me have explained them over and over. I want to know where the rockets have gone. People watch those launches. I watched those launches. I watched Challenger blow up on my TV as a kid and Discovery burn up in the atmosphere. Are you telling me that it was all faked for a joke? Well, not a joke. I mean, for the sake of humanity, at least in their minds, or control. You know. Anyway, uh, where did Discovery come from if not from space? The pieces were spread across 10 states. Yeah, who told you it was Discovery? Sorry. I had to throw that in there. Uh, I'm sorry, you probably don't have all the answers. I just need more than a couple of videos telling me to ask questions and such. I'm an engineer. I need data. Thanks, Eric. Uh, yeah, he's already on his way to madness, I can tell already. But that's fine. Again, that's the fact that he's right. You got to understand that every time someone gets motivated enough to, to email me directly, it's in their head and it is not going away. This one's called Watch China's Moon Landing Set Stage for Space Race on YouTube. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, Mark, topic for discussion as of late. I think it's one of two reasons why. Uh, the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing coming up or Stephen Curry stating the, the moon landings were a hoax. Save the CBS YouTube video of China landing a rover on the moon for future reference. More space drumbeat here. Way to start 2019 off. China gets the win, not NASA. Do me a favor while reading this. Read me Google search results statistics on Flat Earth and Donald Trump because the government is going to be shutting down until Trump gets this wall built, apparently, or they impeach him. They're not impeaching him. There's not enough time. The impeachment process takes way too much time. Uh, it, it look, it, It's not like the old days where Nixon resigned because he knew he was going down. The, the legal process is way more difficult now. He's not he's going up for re-election. They're not going to impeach him. In fact, the impeachment process, the only reason they're going through with it is they're hoping it can damage his re-election uh, chances, which is interesting. Uh, is, uh, have a good one, Mark. Keep it flat. Uh, Earth, that is. And that's Nathan from West Virginia. Yeah, that, that China thing is utter rubbish, utter trash. There's, there's nothing good coming from that. Again, it's an interesting. The Americans aren't talking about it much. And the, the biggest question, I think Jaron touched on this, was that where's the freaking images? 
Uh, it's 2019, why, and we were doing 30 frames a second television video in 1969 with a transmitter that couldn't even begin to, to reach even a fraction of that distance, n not to mention punch through the Van Allen belts and do it with pinpoint accuracy. We could do it in 1969, and in 2019, we can't send back anything. Can't, can't send back anything. We've got, we've got technology that is m so many orders of magnitude higher than what we had in 1969. And and yet the Chinese, they're there and it's like, oh, no, we landed on the dark side of the moon and show a static image that could be totally faked. I mean, anybody could fake it. And, and we're, people are saying, oh, that's they're absolutely on the dark side of the moon. Whatever. Oh, it's just terrible. It helps us in a way because the lack of what they're sending and the fact that they're only sending uh, computer gener generated images of, you know, what they said happened when they got to the dark side. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Moving on. This one's called Proof the Photos of the Earth Are Fake. Mark, I'm sure you and most of your audience are familiar with Neil deGrasse Tyson's now infamous Twitter quote, Earth is not only oblate and wider at the equator than pole to pole, but pear-shaped slightly wider just south of the equator. My question or proof is this. If the Earth is pear-shaped, then why are all the photos of the Earth show it as spherical? And that's from Rose. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We've covered that before. Uh, it's not just that all the images are uh, spherical. They're perfectly spherical. There isn't a hint of oblate anything. If you look at oblate spheroid, just type that into Google and click on images. Oblate spheroid is a very specific thing, and that is a squished basketball. It doesn't look even remote, just vaguely like a sphere. It looks like you're you, like you're standing on top of a, a basketball with some of the air out of it. It's it's that sort of squished, and we don't we, we never ever see that. But we don't have to worry about Neil deGrasse Tyson right now because, um, as you know, 2018 uh, hashtag Me Too dominates everything. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson ended up canceling the rest of his lecture tour because of sexual harassment things. Turns out he uh, did not do some nice things back in the day. And again, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, there are certain celebrities that should be nowhere near flat earth. And now Neil deGrasse Tyson has killed his own credibility. We can't even, I doubt if we'll, we'll see him addressing flat earth anytime soon. He's got to hide out in his house. Now he's not going to be uh, as attacked necessarily as Matt Lauer, who can never go out in public again. But yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson, sexual harassment. It, 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 he's not going to go to jail like Cosby did, but he's he's under the microscope at the moment, and uh, 2019 is going to be a rough, rough year for him. Moving on, this one's called Check This Out and Part 1. Uh, it's a video called The Apollo Detectives Part 2, December of 2018, with Marcus Allen and Scott Henderson. Cool. Thank you for that. That's from Dave Tanner. This one's called A Chat. Oh, okay. I'm going to read this. this is, I hate this type of email. Look, if you're going to send me emails, do paragraph breaks. Please do paragraph breaks. Hit enter a few times because otherwise the text is just this big, long block. And this one's not that long, but we'll get through it. Hi, Mark. I'm an old man who ha has a very unusual life. I quit all major media 20 years ago to regulate what goes into my head. I find it very hard to watch television today. I see others are now becoming aware of the room called Earth. Ooh, I like that. How far have you carried this thought process? Very far. Um, have you reached the point of why it happened and what reason they have for having the farm and what they do to get from the cattle? Uh, yes, and I wouldn't call us cattle. On the farm I grew up on, all critters had a point for why we had them. Humans are not a free choice entity. Back in the day when some of us became aware of a choice was made and options were decided. One of the options was to build enough nukes to protect ourselves to threaten with. Russia agreed with the U.S. and each built over 7,500 nukes, 15,000 nukes with nobody to send them at. Those who won the debate convinced the others that we either could win freedom or it was totally hopeless and that it is why we hide the tr why the hide the truth went into place. In case you are not sure, 500 of today's nukes would wipe out humanity. I appreciate all of the effort made to look up and prove a lot of things, but don't you think looking at what we walk on might be even more? 
As an example, off the coast of Orlando, there is a manufactured pipe that is five miles wide that you can see the individual sections it was made by. Five miles wide and placed there in sections. I have not heard of this, actually. I mean, I know Bimini Road, if that's what he's talking about. Bimini Road is pretty narrow by comparison. I could go on for many days with these little items. I have known long enough that I chose not to reproduce. Hmm. I will not be a voluntary cow. I am 65. I have noticed some awareness happening around me these days. I wonder why that is happening. They have reduced our intelligence steadily, except for a few that slip through. I would rather they have set off the nukes than be a cow. How about you? Think about how reduced we have become for them to get away with this for so long. Since you have been considering the Bible in your research, what have you come up with for the Great Flood? Salt water, dry lake beds, and high altitudes suggest that it wasn't that long ago, which 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 previous batch of us got out of hand and tried the nuke or other option that were erased by a flood? Probably just turned the gravity off for a while. I have known for over 40 years. How do you think I have felt living in a herd of cows? Would appreciate a chance to visit with Aware Minds. Thanks for your time. Uh, and and he's actually, his, his name is Mark. Uh, I don't really know how to answer most of this other than the uh, space race was staged. The arms race was staged because it was tied to the space race. Uh, so you don't have to worry about the nukes. I do believe in, in radiation. and I do believe that elements can be broken down. So I do believe in fission. Sorry, I, I do. Uh, if, if you want to, at the very least, you can say that we have extreme uh, high impact explosives. Uh, but I do believe in fission. Uh, I do. That, that's just me, though. If you don't want to believe in fission, fine. I won't lose any sleep over it. Uh, I don't know if he had any other questions other than I don't think we're cows. I, I don't I don't think we're that. I think this is a, a school more than anything. I think we're students and we're here to learn. Get perspective and recharge our batteries for what's outside of this place. So, yeah, I have given it a lot of thought and I, I know that He's kind of stuck in a negative cycle at the moment. And given his age, he would have been in his 30s when the whole uh, arms race was hitting its peak. And, and you know, everyone was worried that Russia and the United States were going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, which would never, ever, ever happen because now everything's so linked. All the economies are linked that if one country goes down, they all go down. Even if you, if, if you just wipe them out economically, even if you use neutron weapons, neutron bombs, uh, which I don't even know if we have anymore, instead of uh, regular fission bombs. Anyway, I, let's let's not continue on with this one. Moving on, we got more. This one's called Check Out Boeing's New Spacesuit Model. Uh, the one on the right, the blue one. Yeah, if you guys want to check out something interesting, Boeing's trying to subcontract out all the NASA spacesuits, and the one that they use is Boeing Blue. And so instead of a white spacesuit, it would be blue. I don't know how they're going to pull that off because, well, if you do a spacesuit and you try to fake a spacewalk, that blue is not going to do well on television. It's going to blend in too much with that dark background. And it's just not going to, you're not going to be able to do much with that. Moving on. This one's called Watch the Smallfoot Trailer 2018 on YouTube. Mark, think you are one of the truther Bigfoot in this movie. Lots of truth in this family movie. Yeah, there's a, an animated movie out there called Smallfoot. Uh, and he says, go rent this movie and see what you get out of it as a truther now. Trying to wake people set in their ways of thinking about the shape of the earth. This was a great movie. I think there are some truthers in the production crew. Let us know what you think about it. Keep it flat, Nathan. Yeah, he's, he's absolutely right. There's tons of, of truthers out there in the, in the Hollywood industry. Because remember... In, if you're in the creative arts, you're open-minded about a lot of things, and Flat Earther is going to come across your desk. And so people get into it. This one's called Sun's Radio Waves. Hey, Mark, today I took a 12 to 14 gigahertz satellite TV receiver dish, and I connected it to a signal strength meter and pointed it around the sky. I found that the equatorial belt had quite a few hotspots, but the sun was also putting off a medium-level radio signal in this band. I know some people say the sun is just a projected image using 2D or 3D HD super LED projectors, but naturally this doesn't seem to explain why it would be putting off radio waves. Why not? Why not? You can generate radio waves off it as well. Just saying. Uh, radio waves make it seem more like it's actually a big ball of fire up there because they do put off radio waves in that band due to the well-proved scientific principle called black body radiation. 
I can demonstrate that to you as well if you like. Black body radiation is why you can feel the heat on your face when you turn on an electric stove or light up a wood fire if you have a wood stove. What's your take on radio waves from the sun? I'm in Squim, Washington, and I'd be glad to meet up with you in Squim or Woodby Island and demonstrate it to you. Just let me know. All the best, Jesse. No, I, I, I totally get the black body radiation. Uh, but as far as wherever the sky is emitting radio waves, it's not that much of a stretch. We're talking extremely advanced technology that can do just about whatever it wants. Remember, it's trying to create an illusion. The sky is being done this way to, it's not necessarily a trick, it's just giving you a puzzle to figure out. I know some people say, well, is God deceiving us? It's like, no, no, God's testing you. There's a difference. This one's called Flat Earth Map on a Cruise Ship. And someone sent me a pic of a, looks like a, one of the restaurants. And yeah, it's got a, it's got a flat earth map on the ceiling. So I am going to use that as a thumbnail. And that was sent by Corey. Thank you, Corey. That's awesome. This one's called Solar System Size and Scale Model. Good morning, Mark, with the Super Wolf Blood Moon or whatever coming up. I wanted to learn more about the size and scale of our supposed solar system. I cannot find a single image or model out there that depicts both size and distance. I have seen distance, but with just planet names. I have seen planet sizes, but not to distance scale. All I want to do is see if the size and distance of the sun could make a full shadow on the moon given the immense size of the sun. Just a quick gut check. Should be simple, right? If you have an image, I would love to see it. Thanks, Dom. I, I do not have an image of this, Dom. Uh, it's it's interesting thought. Again, love that, that people are thinking, you know, just their, their, their minds are going, the wheels are turning. I do not have an image, though, to send you in, in this case. This one's called Interested in Interviewing You. Hello, Mark. My name is Julia. I am a documentarian. I've never heard that title before. From California, working on a film about the resurgence of the Flat Earth Movement that will begin filming in approximately four months. I will be able to travel to you to film. I would love to interview for you for this documentary as you've been vocal and influential in the movement. I am unsure of my own beliefs about the Flat Earth, so I am doing my best to make this a project with an unbiased and open-minded angle. You can research me on Instagram, blah, 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 or email me here. Looking forward to hearing from you from Julia. And I will not give out her her uh, full name, but I said, yes, absolutely. I will talk to you about this. Sounds fun. The last documentary I did was fun, and most of my family has now watched it because now you can get it on iTunes and Google Play and Amazon and YouTube and all that stuff. Behind the curve. Uh, this one's called Questions Regarding Space Flight. Hi, Mark. I've been watching Flat Earth videos for about two to three months and have been slowly been forced to come to the conclusion that we've been indoctrinated and lied to all of our lives. I don't know why this is shocking to me, since I've been convinced for quite a while that pretty much everything we are being told are lies from diet, healthcare, politicians, world events, and the news coverage of such issues. I have two questions regarding space flight. Based on my understanding of what technology we have, it would seem impossible for space flights to happen. I realize I may not have all the facts, so if wrong, please excuse my ignorance. In my limited time of research, I haven't heard any flat earth believers mention these. Question one. It's my understanding that rocket engines are just very powerful combustion engines which require a fuel source and oxygen to work. If outer space is a vacuum which does not contain oxygen, how is it possible for these space vehicles to maneuver in space and soft land on the moon? Okay, I will answer the first one. Uh, first off, you can use thrust. You can use liquid oxygen uh, or combustible materials that are in liquid form that contain oxygen. And that will generate thrust. That's not the problem. The problem is you have nothing to push off against once you get out there. Because remember, when you're walking, you're pushing off the ground. When you're swimming, you're pushing off the water. Even airplanes are pushing off against the air. Hence the name airplanes. Uh, but it's but here's the thing. when Because remember, uh, the, the stuff you're breathing is really just a thin version of water. It's N4O, four parts nitrogen to one part oxygen. But when you get into space, supposedly, if you believe mainstream science, there's nothing out there. So what are you pushing off of? Nothing. So if you're not pushing off of anything, 
what happens? How's that rocket moving? I mean, yeah, yeah, once the rocket, you know, if the rocket's going up, of course, the thrust from leaving the ground, that's going to carry you a ways. But then when you get into space, when you want to change directions, what are you doing? How are you, you doing that exactly? Uh, question two, based on what scientists tell us, the Earth is traveling 66,000 miles around the sun, assisted by gravity, and the moon is tethered to the Earth by the same magical force. If the space vehicle leaves the Earth's atmosphere and enters the vacuum of space, wouldn't it be logical to assume this vehicle would lose touch with the Earth and moon very quickly due to their high-speed movement? Yes, absolutely. You're absolutely right on that one. Um, thank you very much for all the content you and the other YouTubes produce on this subject. Regards, Greg. Yeah, in regards to the to, to the second question, it's not just the 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 moon, the sun. Suppose, I'm sorry, the, the Earth is traveling at sixty six thousand miles in one direction. Uh, it's that the solar system is supposedly moving sideways like a dinner plate at half a million miles an hour. And once you hit the Lagrange point, that point of null gravity, that's gone. You're gone. That's it. That whatever you you that whatever probe or whatever you have sending you're sending out there loses momentum almost immediately and just f falls away. Uh, like dropping a golf ball outside of a window of a car. Uh, yeah, that golf ball have some momentum and keep keep with you for a bounce or two, but that's it. The energy dissipates and that's it. It's gone. This one's called Project Blue Book Series. Mark, there's a new history channel series called Project Blue Book uh, starting January 8th. Have you heard of this? Happy New Year. Uh, that's from James. Yes, I have heard of this. And again, it's sort of an X-Files clone knockoff thing. Uh, I don't think it's going to do much. I mean, yeah, it'll it'll get people somewhat interested in conspiracies, but really, it's just a it's just an X Files knockoff. Um, this one's called Rainbows. Let's do a few more. Rainbows, Mark. How do you explain the half circular shape of the rainbow after it rains? Sincerely, Sam Majors. And uh, I exp it actually helps the flat Earth a lot more than it does the globe. In fact, I'll, I'll do it two ways. One, when you look at a rainbow, it's shaped like a dome. How's that? It's pretty good, right? So he calls it a half circular shape. No, it's shaped like a dome. We talk about the dome all the time. Uh, but what's more interesting about a rainbow, if you want to look this up, a lot of people have don't know this. Uh, look, because you can. Oh, it's, everything's on YouTube now. Go onto YouTube and look up helicopter above rainbow. When you look, uh, when you're in a helicopter and you get above a rainbow, it's not just a dome anymore. It's a full blown top of a sports stadium. Type that. It's a full-blown circle. It looks like a dinner plate. Uh, that's what's really, really cool. I uh, seriously check that out if you get a chance. Maybe maybe I'll, maybe I'll start including that in my Q and A videos. Maybe not this one. Probably not this one. This one's called Dale's Paper. Dear Mr. Sergeant, would you please be so kind to send me a copy of Dale's The Throne of God Paper? Thanks in advance for your help. Sincerely, Andre. Uh, did I already send that to him? No, I haven't. So I will put that in my to-do list. I will send that to him really quick. Uh, this one's called Halos in Sweden. Oh, that was from that. Yeah, somebody, remember I said earlier in the show that somebody sent me an image of the uh, sun dogs. So that it was in Sweden. And so, yeah, uh, some same, same sort of thing. That was sent from Hakan Nordstrom. I did not know Nordstrom was a Swedish name. And it makes so much of sense because Nordstrom, the uh, department store, started up here in the Northwest. Didn't realize that that was a Norwegian um, name or a uh, Swedish name. Sweet, sorry, Swedish. Moving on, let's do two more. This one's called Horrible Interviewing. Mark, you honestly need to get trained in interviewing skills. You would let the lady pilot talk. She could could have explained I'm reading this as is folks for a reason much more what she saw up there and you just wouldn't shut up about her consequences for speaking up who cares about that take some interviewing lessons man and that's from J.I. Elias I think he's talking about when the female's pilot was the 737 pilot I was interviewing her and uh, wow that's the first person's ever complained about my interviewing skills but again remember I talk for a living and she's the type of person that doesn't offer up a lot of I mean it's not like pulling teeth but it, she you know I had to kind of coax her out of in during the interview so I'm not apologizing at all but again I don't think he's even trolling me but your his grammar was terrible so I, I think that's kind of ironic all right let's end on a good one 
This one's called Couple Picks from Work. Hey, Mark, just wanted to send you a couple pictures of what's going on at my job. I'm a semi tire tech, and the trucks that we use have the earth is flat on and, um, things that are dusty. I figured you would get a chuckle out of these picks. I have three and a half of my co three and a half <laughs> on coworkers on board with flat earth, which is nice. Now I have people to talk about it. Anywho, you have a good one and stay flat. And that's from Matthew. And yeah, he, he sent me. So basically, and I've seen that other people have done this, you know, when you, when you write things on a, on the side of a, a dirty car in, in the dust or the dirt, uh, people do that with flat earth all the time. And I love that, that he writes it on his own trucks until they get washed. That's great. So, well, you know what? Let's call this call this one good. And thank you to everybody that sent me emails. And if you want to shoot me something, all you have to do is email msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.